I think the nation needs to know Pastor Jacoby's story, yeah. uh, how we got saved. Yeah. Uh, your testimony is so powerful. Yes, sir. Well, in, uh, at, at that time, I was in, in Cleveland, Ohio, and... Uh, Go well, Browns! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, at, in Cleveland, Ohio, I was, I was 16 years old, and uh, I was wasting my life. My mom had moved to, uh, to the States to go to school, and she brought me over to have a better life, like so many other Bahamians. That's and, right, uh, that's right. But I was, you know, m my dad really did, he wasn't in my life, so I didn't really have that strong male figure, so. Which is so important. Important, and, and at that time, she was mostly supporting herself, so we, we didn't live in the best neighborhood, so, you know, your surroundings, your circumstances will influence you. If you don't have, uh, if you don't, first of all, have Jesus, and, and a lot of times, if you don't have that male figure, and so that's what happened. I was affected by my surroundings, and, uh, I was, uh, I got into selling drugs. I was selling crack at 14 years old. Whoa. Um, I was, I, I got, ended up getting kicked out of school a year after that. And I remember sitting in my bed, this is in Tennessee. I was sitting in my bedroom one night because I always believed in God, yes. you know? And I said to myself, I said, if you die, I said, Kobe, if you die today, do you know, for, do you know where you would go? And I knew for sure I was going to hell. Yes. I knew it. You knew, yes. And it scared me, but I didn't know what to do mm -hmm. because even though I'd heard the message I didn't believe. And we have a lot of people that hear, and that, because they believe. think they hear, they don't believe. Yeah, you, that's so true. And uh, so I didn't know what to do. It scared me for a few days, and then I went right back to what I was doing. And then a couple of years later, we moved to Ohio. Uh, a cha change of scenery, I didn't know anybody there. So I stopped selling drugs, but I was smoking my life away, just like you see a lot of these young men. Right. I was just smoking, smoking every day, getting high, and, and uh, I, got, I started to get a hunger for righteousness. I didn't know what it was at the time, but mm -hmm. I wanted to know God. But I thought I already knew about God because yeah, I was raised in hearing, church. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? So you I was hearing like, it well, for you know, a long time. That's not, the, that's not what I want. Let me look for God somewhere else. So I started to get in the Rasta thing. I started to, to read and, and, and just try to, try to figure out what would satisfy the hunger in my soul. I'd read the Bible and, and different things. And I came in the house high one night. My mom, she looked at me and she was so disappointed. And she said, you say you believe in God, but you don't live like it. And when she said those words, it felt Ooh. like somebody took a sword and put yes. it right in my heart. Yes. And I knew it was true. Right. And this is what I did. And to be honest with you, when I did this, I didn't expect an answer. I prayed. I said, I went in my room and I prayed. And I said, God, if you don't want me living this way, you change me. And I honestly did not expect God to answer because I had this religious mindset that prayer is just something that you do. You don't expect God to answer you. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't hear a voice. I didn't feel anything different, but I was sincere. And so I said that what many people say, I said, okay, I'm going to change my life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my ways. I'm going to do the right thing. Because I thought that was the solution. Yes. And I, I actually tried that, and I was sincere. So I, I stopped hanging. I stopped cutting school. I stopped uh, smoking. Didn't hang out with the people I was hanging out with, my new friends, for a week. That's how, that's, how, <laughs> that's how long I could do it because, you know. Uh, yeah, you lasted a week. I lasted a week. <laughs> yeah. And the weekend came, and my, my friends were knocking on the door, and they're like, where have you been all week? You've been hiding from us. We haven't seen you. And they, I was hiding because I knew if I hung out with them, what I would be doing. But I, I said to myself, you know what? I've been good all week. Let me just do something. have fun, and then yeah. I'll get back on the... Like, some people, dece we deceive ourselves, right? Of course. So I went to this party. I mean, I, we were walking to this party, and uh, we were, they were smoking, and, and I was smoking with them, and I couldn't get high. Ah. And I, I, you know, 10 minutes go by, 15, 20 minutes go Still by, wasn't I couldn't get high. high. And I was, I, was, I was like, what's wrong? And I saw maybe the weed was bad or something like that. <laughs> God you know, was intervening. It never happened to me before, right? Right, right, right. Everybody else was, you know, they were, they, were, they were good. So by the time we got to the party, I sat down, and I, I, it was the conviction of the Spirit, but I didn't know that. I, I felt horrible. I felt so guilty. And I was like, what is this? What is this? And being there for 30 minutes, I, was having, I, I felt so terrible. I told my friends, I'm sick. I didn't tell them the real thing. I said, I'm right. sick. I'm not feeling good. I'm going to go home. So they said, okay, well, we'll walk you home because it was late at night. So we left the party, and as we were walking home, my prayer came back to my, my mind. God, if you don't want me living like this, you change me. Whoa. And then I started to get afraid because now I'm thinking I prayed, and God has actually answered me. So I said to myself, this is not God, because I didn't want to believe. I said, this is not God. This is a coincidence. Uh. And as I said that, I felt, I felt even worse conviction. And uh, as we were walking home, I'm, I'm trying to convince myself that God is not speaking to me. And I said, you know what? This is not God. And I tell you no lie about r where the back wall is in your studio. Mm -hmm. As I said this, and I was with my friends. They saw this too. A bolt of lightning hit the street in the front of us. And all I saw was white light. And I thought I was dead. It was, it was the most terrifying experience I ever had. Wow. 
and it stunned us for a few seconds and then we took off running every direction we just scattered and when we came back together everybody was talking about how we almost got hit by lightning but i just in moment just a moment before that happened i said this is not god this is a coincidence mm -hmm. okay so anybody in their right mind would have thought that was a sign from god right you know what i said to myself after i saw it was okay this is not god this is a coincidence. Yeah. I knew it was God. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, it says, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? My own heart was trying to deceive me and tell me what God was showing me was not true. Right. Even though I knew it was, yes. I was trying to deny it, but I'd given God permission. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that God has to have your permission to, he said, I stand at the door and knock. And knock. Yes. And he'll show you as many signs as you as you need, and, and he'll go above and beyond. But if you don't want to let him in, you'll find an excuse. You'll find a reason not to let him in. And that's what I was trying to do, but because of my prayer, he wouldn't leave me alone. And so after I almost got hit by lightning, I told my friends, we're almost at my house. I said, just go back to the party. I'll walk the rest of the way by myself. So they left, and I got home. And when I got into my bedroom, it was like a weight. The weight of my sin was on me so heavy, I'd never... I, I never felt it this way before. I, I had to get rid of it. And I, all I said was these words. I said, God, I'm sorry. And when I said that, if you would have told me that this would have happened or could have happened, I would have said, never, not to me. Whoa. When I said those words, I felt the son of the living God enter my bedroom and I lost all strength in my body and I fell on my face. I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. I, it was like I was awake and asleep at the same time. It was like I was a dead man. And for the first time, it, it, it God showed me what I look like to him. He showed me what sin actually looks like to him. Mm -hmm. And the way, that, the best way that I could describe it, which is not a, even, a, it, even, even it, this, this description is even, it's not the best, but it's the best that I can give. It's like if you took, if you took me in a sewer and dipped me in it and saturated yeah. my entire being in right, it, and right. it took me out and put me next to the most pure, yes. holy, clean being that ever existed. And God says, this is why I hate sin. I don't hate you. I hate what you're in, but you can't see it because we're born in sin. sin yes. You know, and uh, I felt like a, I, 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 and the, the next thing that I realized, two things I realized, I realized, first of all, God had every right to destroy me. Every right. If he would have said, I'm judging you now, I had no words to say. I knew I was guilty. I knew it. And he knew it. And then the second thing that I felt was complete and total love. And I couldn't understand why him looking so being so pure would love me so impure i couldn't understand that because human love is not like that right man's love is not man's love says you have to you have to give me something for me to give you something back exactly i thought well god why would you love me and i wept on my bedroom floor for two hours and i went to sleep and when i woke up the next morning it felt like somebody took pure water and washed my heart washed all of my sins and i i got up and i said what is this i said what is this i didn't know what it was because i was brand new all the guilt from the previous night, all the sin, everything was gone. And I was like, what is this? And I went to go to the bathroom and my mom looked at me. I didn't even speak to her. She looked in my face and she stepped back and she said, what happened to you? I said, what do you mean? She said, what happened to you? You look different. Yes. She said, go look in the mirror. Your face is different. Wow. And I had joy for the first time in my life. I thought when I used to get high and when I used to drink and the things that I did, I thought that was joy. joy yeah. I'd never experienced joy in my life. I actually experienced the joy of the Lord, and I didn't even know it was available. And then God revealed to me that what he did for me, Jesus came to do for every human being. And that's what I've been doing since that time. Wow, what a testimony. Yes, sir. What a testimony. What a testimony. Martha Monka said, no test, no testimony. Amen. Won't he do it?